Hey everybody, Steve Atherton with Joe to Jock here. Uh, hopefully by now you've had a chance to check out my beginner cornhole video. Gotten a few tips on your tossing technique, a little bit of strategy help. Well, this video is a little bit more on the advanced techniques. I'm gonna provide some drills and some tips to help you take your game to the next level. This is Intermediate Cornhole. Okay, so you've gotten into the game of cornhole a bit, and now you're ready to take your game to the next level. Maybe you decided that you wanna play in a league, or maybe you're gonna get into your first tournament. You need some tips and some drills and some strategies to really take your game up a notch. I hope that this video will do that. Now, a couple things that have to happen to get better at the game of cornhole. First of all, the value of your throws goes up immensely. In the uh, beginner video, I talked a lot about just getting the bags on the boards. You can beat a lot of people that way if you're consistently hitting the board. Well, to become a really good player, your throws and the precision of your throws has to go up incredibly. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do some drills to improve your throw and dial in where you're hitting the boards and how you're hitting the boards, the trajectory that you throw on and where exactly you land them on the boards. One thing that you have to really quickly determine in a game of cornhole against a good opponent is whether you are essentially the hammer or the nail. Um, sometimes you're going to be the hammer where you're just knocking them in the hole and you're pulling ahead at all times. And sometimes you're going to be the nail. And that means that the other player is better at throwing the bags in the hole and you've got to become a blocker. You've got to understand how to keep them from scoring so that you have an opportunity to catch up when you can or you strategically put yourself in a position where you can go for the hole and they can't. So we're going to talk some about blockers, we're going to talk some about uh, airmail shots, and we're going to see if we can give you some drills to help you improve those shots. Okay, now let's talk for a second about blocking technique, because just getting a bag on the board short of the hole isn't very effective at blocking the hole if it's not in a window about the size of this uh, tape here. So what you'll find is that if you block just in front of the hole, a good player is going to send their bag in here and they're going to knock them both in and they're going to keep opening up the hole so that they can throw for the next round and you're going to have to keep placing blockers. If you block too short, what you'll find is that good players are going to throw bags that come over the top, land here, and go in. So really your window for setting a blocker is very small. And so setting up a little tape job on your boards like this is a good way to practice your block shots. What I would suggest here is, you know, throw 50 bags, see how many of them you can get that fall within the blue uh, square. Anything outside of that is not very effective because now there's still an alley for the other player to get their bags in the hole. So that's drill number one is simply the blocking drill. Um, this is about five inches shy of the uh, front of the hole up to about a foot shy of the hole. Somewhere in that window, a little bit right or left so that their alley from the side is not, uh, uh, is obstructed a little bit. If you can hit things in that square, you're gonna be throwing good blockers. So throw 50 of them, see how many you can get in that square and try to improve your score every time. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna try that drill really quickly. Now I've got eight bags here. Again, I said to throw 50, but just for an example. Now, a couple things. If you play with the double-sided bags that have a sticky side and a slick side, I would definitely recommend throwing your blockers with the sticky side down. That makes it tougher for the opponent to slide them in. If you're not playing with double-sided bags, then you're gonna to need to take your trajectory up a little bit to keep the bags landing more softly and not skidding through the boards, okay? So let's see how we do here. Fairly solid three out of four so far. All right, so five out of eight, maybe six out of eight, pretty solid blockers there. Again, you can start to see if those were a little closer to the hole, much easier for the opponent to knock those all in. And if I bring them back just a little bit, it's fairly easy to get those over the top. Uh, and if they're a little too far off to the sides, you leave the hole open as well. So again, it's all about the precision of your throws and the practice time that you make getting these things to hit very close to that little square every time. Okay, next drill is a push drill or a slide drill. Now, I've set one bag out in front of the hole there about five inches. 
Uh, what I want to do here with the other seven bags, I'm going to try to throw low burners that push that bag into the hole. I'm gonna, if I happen to chase it in and they both go in, I'll go set another one out in front. Uh, hopefully I can throw them where I push one in, leave one in front, and I'm trying to just continually shove one in and leave one sitting in front of the hole. This is a very difficult drill. When I'm throwing these push shots, I want the slick side of the bags down so that they move through with a lot more speed and they push the other bag through the hole. So if you throw them with the suede side down, they're gonna stick and they won't slide. Okay, so there's one. I gotta put another one back out front. Okay. This one I've put a little farther back from the hole so it's even more of a challenge to push it all the way in got to bring the trajectory down even more. Yeah, got it. Now that one, so when you have a bag that sits like this, it's going to be very hard to pull it in. So now we need what we call the drag shot. A drag shot is more like an arc, more like a lob shot that hits and pulls the bag in with it. Um, so we try to throw a lob and we see if we can slam dunk this thing and pull both bags into the hole. Got a little kick on there. Wasn't quite what I planned, but I did get one in and the other one stayed on the board, so it's still a good shot. It's not a bad idea when you're practicing to keep moving the bags back toward the front of the board and see how far you can get back toward the front of the board and still be able to push one in. This one's getting probably a foot, almost a foot and a half shy of the hole. This is a tough shot to shove this one all the way up to the hole and in. Takes a very low and fast shot. And that happens a lot. So it can be done, but it takes a very precise, low and fast shot to make that happen. All right, let's go through a couple scenarios here so you get some of the strategy of better players. So in this case, you're the orange team. You've got one on the board, one off the back. The gray team there has two on right in front of the hole. Now it's your throw. You have two options here. First one, if you are feeling really good about your throw, holy cow, that's a gigantic bee, uh, is to throw them sticky side down and try to fly them over the top of the gray and land them in the hole so you can pull ahead. If you don't feel that great with your throw, like I'm saying about a mm, 60, 70% confidence level, I would pile them right into those gray ones on the front and try to get a push out of the round. So if we decided to go for it, we'd go over the top like this, sticky side down, and hope that that hangs on the board or goes in. If we go for a push or to get as many on the board as we can just to pile up some points and maybe take a little bit of a loss on the round, I'd go sticky side down and throw it right into the middle of the board so that they have a tougher time making any more or pushing their own in. A good exercise would be to sit here and throw these lob shots with those two blockers sitting in front until you can get two out of four in the hole almost every time. That would be a pretty high percentage and would help you a lot when you're playing the game. Another good drill that helps you work on the precision of your throw is the quadrant drill or the four corners drill. So all I'm doing here is I'm seeing how many bags it takes me to hit one in the back left corner of the boards, uh, back right corner, front right corner, front left corner. I'm trying to do it in eight bags or less. It's difficult and you have to be, uh, have good control here to hit all those spots. But sometimes you're gonna find that people clog up the middle of the board and you need to hit one of the edges of the board to get an extra point or two that are very valuable. So uh, throw these sticky side down so the bag sticks a little better and see how many bags it takes you to do it. Not too bad there. That was my eighth bag, and I uh, hardly consider that last one front left corner, but we're getting close. 
All right, now it's time to practice our bread and butter shot, which is the holer or the cornhole shot. Um, I would throw 100 of these a day, and I would count how many you make out of 100 and shoot for 50 or above. If you can get over 50 out of 100, you know you're starting to make some serious progress on your throw. Five out of eight, had to work a little bit there, but not bad. When you're working on your basic shot, just your normal toss, trying to make them in the hole, do it from both sides of the board, do it from both directions, do it into the wind, do it downwind, do it a little uphill, do it a little downhill. You're gonna encounter lots of different situations when you're out there playing in somebody's backyard or you're you know, throwing uphill, whatever. So just make sure you're practicing from both sides of the board and from every different direction so that you get the most out of your practice time. All right, here's another drill to work on varying your holer shot. So I've placed a piece of uh, painter's tape there about halfway up the board. I'm gonna alternate now uh, every bag trying to land it just past the tape and knock them in the hole or keep them on the board. And then I'm gonna try to land them short of the tape and slide them into the hole. So every throw I'm gonna be alternating sticky side down, slippery side down. But I'm just trying to vary how I throw them, throwing them lower, making them skid in, throwing them higher, making them drop in. Now in this case, I'm gonna to try to pull that front bag in. I could obviously throw a, a low flat one and knock it in, but I just threw that bag. So now I need to throw a high one. And I'm gonna to try to drag it in the hole from over the top. I'm gonna try that again. Ah, close. So always vary your practice and make it uh, adaptable to how the bags land when you're throwing. Now this is a fairly unique scenario that does happen sometimes. We got two orange bags sitting right on top of the hole. Chances are pretty good they're gonna get clogged up and none of them will go in. Uh, if you push them from the back, at least the front one should fall in. Maybe they'll all fall in. Uh, or you can go for the airmail shot and try to land right on the top of that pile and see if you can drive them all through the hole. We'll try a little of each here. Got the back one there. Now this one should be a low burner. Now the holes open back up, so now I can go back to my normal throw. A little too far. Better. So you can almost play a game with yourself, playing as the opponent one throw and as yourself the next throw and see if you can alter how you get those bags into the hole. All right, I hope these tips and drills will help you with your strategy and help you with your game. If there are scenarios or things that you find happening a lot in your games that you want more help with, please leave it in the comments below. Subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next video.